Hi, it's Jamie with Jamie's Arts a la Carts. I have a very special video. Uh, this is a happy birthday to me kind of video. Uh, I, I have Cricut, but I decided that I would like to try the Sizzix Big Shot. I do have a cuddle bug, um, but I found that uh, I struggle with uh, the size of the machine and the width of the material that I can put through there. And I found this uh, as a very good deal. I did go ahead and take it out of the original box. It had a pretty big ding in the top, so it it struggled somehow in chipping. But hoping that everything is just fine. So let's unpack this together. So there are our base plates. Oh, they look exciting! Yeah, I heard a jiggle, so my handle had come loose in packing and travel. That's okay. It looks it looks fine. Tools to put it together. And then I'm going to actually flip it over. Because it wants to be the other way inside of this. So I'm very excited to have one of these. I originally started on my card making on an Ellis machine at a local elementary school and boy did I have fun with it and I've done lots of projects old school Ellison wise so there's the box so we'll take all this packaging off and there's there's a die so it looks like flowers and leaves let's take this side out so even though it had a little bit harder of a journey it looks absolutely fine so here it is big shot plus I can show you my cuddle bug and show you the difference and it's a great machine So here's the Sizzix. Let me move this. Try to get everything in camera shot here for you. And you can see the width there. So here's my cuddle bug. And as I'm making cars and I'm starting to emboss envelopes and all that sort of thing, you can see the difference in the opening. So I will be able to do handle a lot larger product and be able should open up uh, all kinds of opportunities and different things that I'll make. Love the cuddle bug, but I needed something bigger than this opening. All right, we're going to have an exciting week ahead of us. Well, let me show you the stuff before we leave. Sorry, I'm all excited. I can't even think. So, we, what we got in the package is the handle. So this comes off, this is for shipping, here's this, I'm sure there's directions, but well, you kind of know how that goes, right? If I can't figure it out, then I'll read the directions. So they gave me an Allen wrench and a little nut. Oh, they got a washer, so I think it makes sense. Put the washer, then the nut. So we'll thread it through. Now I see a little scrape on my handle, but not anything that makes me sad about it. Just is what it is. Just the tiniest little thing over here. No telling what kind of shipping in this pandemic, what it had to go through to get here. Got here pretty quick. And I'll show you the tiny little scrub. It's not anything. Got it from Amazon. Been very pleased with uh, it's just the tiniest little scrub right there. And it's because it was loose in the box. Okay, so then I got the, the nut in there, and so then boom, shakalaka covered up. And there you go. 
American Ingenuity, you didn't have to read the directions. So then, we'll cut the little tag off. They even have a, a bow template. If you watched my video from last week, I'll link it up above. I made bows for my uh, granddaughter. So here we go. I'm just going to try not to damage anything. They put a nice little protection for shipping around my handle. I like that. And it's nice and rubbery, so it'll be easy to lift. It's a little bit heavy, but to be honest, I think it's lighter than the cuddle bug. <laughs> this thing is heavy, which is terrible for my shoulder in particular. So it comes with a warranty, an extended warranty. That's really nice. There are the shipping pieces. So in addition to the actual mat machine itself, I got these items. So let's see what we got. So this says Everyday Essentials from Sizzix. Sizzix is a good company. I've never had a complaint with their products. And they're tight and it's sucking to the foam part. So there's what came with it. So it's a die and it has uh, petals, or leaves, flower petals, single petals, a butterfly. So that's, that's something I will definitely use. All right, so this is in its own packaging. I'm sure there's a, a thing, but I'm just gonna cut it. Make it easier to get to. It's a little scrub up on the packaging, but again, I was a little worried with the shape of the box, but um, I think it's just, just fine. Here's one of my plates. So that's what feeds through to create the magic. And they give you some paper to start out on. So a small bundle, a larger bundle. That'll be fun. Directions. Oh, there's how to do the crank. Oh, by golly, we did it just right. So then inside basically tells us how to be safe with it. Obviously don't ever put your finger in there. Um, and I'll read all this later. Let's get to the fun part. Let's look at it. Ah, so here's an embossing folder. And I'll show you in my next video part when I come back. I'm going to go get all of the ones that I have. I'm really excited to be able to use my folders and my thinlets. I've been collecting thinlets. Look at that, I'll be able to make a box. Pretty butterflies, beautiful flower, hearts. I'm gonna love it. It's gonna, gonna have a blast with this. So here is uh, the adapter. They're real good about telling you. Sizzix is real good about labeling everything for you. Here's A, that was B, this is A. You know that by this right up here. So that's the adapter A, adapter B, and then here is your plus form. So here's your main base. And then of course you have the two top plates. It'll be like I've shown you with the cuddle bug layering it. The one thing I've, I've read in the reviews is that um, I probably will try to get a, a magnetic base and that holds your thinlets in place and then you don't have to tape it. All right, so we're back. We have everything unboxed. Uh, I have a flurry of activity happening on the work table here. And uh, this is my new big shot that I got for my birthday. Very happy to have received it. And uh, one of the things I wanna try with this immediately is 
uh, the same kind of technique that I did with the cuddle bug. I want to uh, emboss some of my flaps. So I want to carefully place my embossing folder, which that's what this is called, on my envelope. And these aren't quite long enough for these envelopes. So what I want to do is get them all lined up. And we're going to actually emboss two at one time. So I'm going to go ahead and lay that on my machine. Make sure it stays square. And then I think we can do one more here at the back side. So I'm going to do something that has birthday in it. And then something that says thinking of you. And it's just a matter of lining the words up to fit the best they can on that flat back there. We've done that in a previous video. Uh, I'll link that up above because it also has uh, the napkin technique uh, that I shared with you that I'm actually going to be using some of those today. Ideally, when you're not on camera, you will want to do this off off to the side. Let me go ahead and do that so you can see it. So you want to create your where you want to put it. And then put the other plate on top of it. And what this does is this embosses, does not cut. So it'll give us a texture, which will be a nice little element for, sorry, you gotta have this plate back here. And then you just roll it through. So that is similar as a cuddle bug. It just rolls through. Then let's see what we got here. Oh, it looks very nice. So it has birthday on there. And then this one has a thinking of you. So we're going to make 10 cards. I'm going to go ahead and finish those up. And uh, then we'll go on to our next step. So something nice with uh, this Big Shot, I'll be able to use my uh, thinlets that I have as well as um, these dies from Sizzix. I have 70 some odd of these. And so they're different little motifs. So you have a cupcake, balloons with a streamer, a present, and there's just all kinds of different little motifs. So I've cut a couple out. Try the balloons. Different sides, you know, different. So we've cut those out. I've got a, a few of the the packages. 
But what I want to get to is the background right now. So that'll be like the next step that we need for the cards that we're creating. So I'm going to move the big shot to the back. And I'll move the dies folders. So we had created together, I did a video of where I did the napkin technique and I, these are actually napkin using saran wrap attached to cardstock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some pre-folded cards that I already have and we're going to create some cards. And we're going to do birthday cards in honor of uh, birthdays that I have coming up as well as celebrating uh, remembering my own birthday coming up real soon. So uh, what I did is I took my cards to get an idea of what size that I need and then I have uh, envelope, um, an envelope making kit and so in that kit it has, I'm going to turn this so you can see it, it has different little forms in there. So what I did is instead of having to measure and make sure it's square and all of that, what I did was I took these forms and I went to the card I said, okay, well, that won't fit. And depending on the, the background, I might use that and then trim off a little on the sides there because this way is okay. But if the image fit, because I'm not going to uh, mat these because with them being on a cardstock, they're already essentially be matted. So what I want to do is just be able to cut this out and attach it to the front. So I'm going to use uh, the, I've got some cream colored ones that are a little larger. So again, I, if I, it's a, a huge picture and I wanted to use that, I've got something to work with to get my straight lines. I could use triangles and all that, but uh, not always did the uh, napkin come out exactly square on the, you know, the cardstock. Sometimes it went over, sometimes it went under. Uh, before we go further, I did try embossing some of uh, those. I did a, a couple. I tried the on this green. And so this is not the uh, saran wrap technique. This is actually Mod Podge uh, with the napkin. You can see the difference. It's a huge difference in that the background really comes through versus this and the texture is very different also this is uh, much rougher than this this is more like cloth but uh, when you try to emboss on this you just can't really hardly see it like even in person and on here definitely not it's down here uh, you can just barely see that versus you know versus this. This is, you know, this is well defined and you can really see it. So I decided not to emboss the backgrounds. So that's where I came up with the, oh well, yeah, we can do the envelopes. I remember the envelope idea. So what we're, what I did is I started cutting some out just to see if the idea would work. And I've got a few started. So here's one. It could go on here, but I need to trim it some more. It could go on here and be really cute. But to be honest, I probably will trim it because of the light color on the light color. But that's not a big deal. I'll go back and trim it up. So I'm going to start trimming these to get our backgrounds. And then we'll move to the next step.
here we are. So we're at the end of this project. It's been a fun one. Uh, I made a set of birthday cards. Um, happy birthday to me. Birthday's coming up. So just a, a fun time. So something that I've done with these that don't say happy birthday on the outside, you know, most of them have, you know, like happy birthday somewhere on there. So for those, I put the message on the inside and it's real simple. Um, happy birthday there. And then on my pretty dinosaur one, look at all that glitter. Love it. Makes it all blingy. We're going to actually together put happy birthday here. I like using my Cricut tweezers because it gives me that extra hand. And uh, I'm using art glitter glue and my little uh, quilling glue bottle. And basically it just puts a fine little bead on there uh, to help it not go everywhere. It's pretty uh, intricate, this little cutout. I use my Cricut to cut, um, cut my little happy birthday, a little verbiage out. I like doing that. I've got an idea for a pop-up card I want to do, and I might use vinyl. We'll see how oh, crazy that might turn out. But basically, just at a little angle, tap it down, move to the next one. And the on this particular font, it didn't the B didn't connect with the rest of birthday, but that's okay. That was me when I did my joining and welding. Not sure how I did that now. I'll link that video so you can see that 100 card challenge that I did. I cut a bunch of this stuff so that I can make 100 cards in a week. And it goes on really easy, really smooth. Art glitter glue dries clear. So another reason I like it, so I'm going to try to get it about the same angle. A little bit out, just a tap. Don't you? I, you see me using the back of my hand, but that's because my fingers get real sticky, and I'm, I'm going to need my tip of my fingers here in a minute. So it's very lacy. This font that I used, I really like it. Just place it down and then literally turn it over and give it a good press. And voila, we have a very cute, I have an idea who I'm going to be giving this to on their next birthday. I think they'll love it. And then the other little thing that I do is I always stamp, you know, that's handmade by me and the year. It's kind of neat to, to look back and see what I have made when I made it. So let's go ahead and do this one and then I'll show you how uh, all the other ones came out. So what I did is after I did, I showed you the rhinestones and then when I was looking at them like, oh, they need just a little something. So what I decided. I'm going to literally turn this over since I was working with glue. I've got, uh, basically when I made some Christmas balls, I just, what I had left over, but it's, so it's a mixture of pinks and blues and greens that I think will look great on this little circus card.
course both got the message on the inside and so again this is a napkin so what I did is I took saran wrap put it put a napkin on top of it and then put it on a piece of cardstock so it looks like this there were four on here and I, I used two and that's kind of something good too look at the difference in the looks you get with the different colors but you just take regular cardstock and I did take 12 by 12 because these were larger napkins and uh, just basically melted the napkin to the cardstock using the saran wrap so that's a really kind of that's a cool technique actually um, so what did we so we did that so we learned that from before so we're learning how to incorporate that in all kinds of projects of course I my birthday present my big shot this, this is going to be a fun thing to learn. Um, I was able to use it on this project even. So we unboxed it together. And then I was able to add a cool little thing to these cards. So, you know, they'll get it addressed. And then when they turn it over to open it, it tells them happy birthday. So they already get, you know, that little happy feeling right off. So we did happy birthday. And then we did a thinking of you for some of the uh, adult adult cards but yeah they turned out great it embosses uh, just like the cuddle bug I was able to do more at a time which kind of just saves but so we've got envelopes for each of the cards I use the embossing folders here so embossing means you just put something inside it run it through the machine and then you get this embossed look so it doesn't cut through, but it pushes through the paper so that you get this nice raised effect. So I use these two folders. I did get some art glitter glue. I've been looking for it for a while and found it on Amazon. I really like this stuff. It's um, thin, but not watery, if that makes sense. So I like the quilling glue bottle, so I literally just took the big bottle and poured it in here. Made easy work of getting these very fine details done. Of course I used my Cricut tools to hold things, to poke things, to move things around. And I used a variety of glitter. Um, so what would I do different next time? Uh, next time I want to get a little more... Um, intricate so um, I'm working on uh, coming up with some pop-up cards uh, I've been wanting to do that for a while so that'll be that's on my goal list and uh, shaker cards I've done those in the past and those usually come out really um, they're just they're just cute and I like making them so well I thank you very much for watching the video I hope you enjoyed it I if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe to my channel uh, I make try to make a, a video um, every week. I do have a surprise announcement coming in the next couple weeks uh, that I think you'll like. But if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you have, thank you. Uh, I appreciate that and I hope to put out videos that you like. If you have any comments or you'd like to see something in particular, like how do I do this, just send me a comment so that I uh, know what you are interested in learning about. Well, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up so uh, YouTube knows that you like this content and you'd like to see more of it. And uh, until next time, happy crafting!